I know. Okay, hopefully, this is Pastor Troy, Pastor Luke. We're in my office, and now we're going to attempt. It's not letting us turn sideways, is it? How do we do this? If anyone can tell Pastor Luke. Oh, here we go. You can't rotate your phone. Okay, well, we won't rotate my phone. This will not be the, the most ideal angle. Uh, there's got to be a better way. Anyway, okay. Heidi's watching. Maybe she can tell us. Uh, until then, we'll use this angle. I don't know how we're going to maintain our social distance. But th this will... This will. Okay, there you go. The six-foot whiteboard I brought in here. Okay, here we go. This is really uncomfortable to close, but that's all right. Uh, so Pastor Luke has his computer open. It's right here. You can't see it because you can barely see him. Uh, and this is the first ever online Mark Bible study. I see Paul Johnson has just checked in, so now we're just waiting. Paul will understand this. Lois will understand this. We're just waiting for Arlene to check in to tell us when we can officially start. So that's inside joke. Did you get that comedy? That's high I, I comedy. Heard, heard, okay, yes. yeah. Okay, so we're going to start at... Um, at Mark 14, 26 today, I realize for some of you, I wanted to go back all the way to the beginning, but we only go through about 10 chapters, 10 verses a week, 10 per hour. So that'd be a long thing. So we're going to start at 14, 26. If you want to follow along, which starts with a, a section entitled the prediction of the disciples uh, failure. The ESV says Jesus foretells of Peter's denial. So here we, uh, here we, we're going to start with prayers. Do you have any, any prayer requests today, Pastor Luke? Because that's how I was started. Uh, just we can figure out all this technology. Yeah, uh, that's right. The whole, in all seriousness, the whole coronavirus situation. And Amen. Yeah. We look to Jesus in all of this. Uh, yes. So coronavirus, all those who are being treated, those who are uh, maybe underemployed at this moment, those who, seems like there's a lot of stress and anxiety. So... Uh, let's pray. Good and gracious Lord, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. And as Pastor Luke just shared in his devotion, we know that you have sent uh, Jesus, who is our good shepherd, who promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us, that he speaks uh, words of hope and comfort to us. And not only today, as we gather together uh, and spend a bit of time in Mark's gospel, not only did he speak 2,000 years ago, but he was there when all things came to be, and he will be there uh, until eternity. Nothing is a surprise to you, Jesus, and so we entrust ourselves and uh, all those close to us uh, and our world uh, to you, knowing and trusting that you make all things new. We pray especially for all those uh, who are gripped with fear and anxiety about things that are unknown. Uh, in the simple prayer, Lord have mercy, will suffice there, uh, but also we pray that uh, that there would be a swift uh, answer or healing, uh, vaccination, whatever the course of treatment may be for this uh, coronavirus. Bless our time today as we spend a bit of time uh, in the Holy Gospel of St. Mark. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. So Mark 14, 26, um, Pastor Luke, you, often I say to you, because I expect you to know more things than me uh, with respect to seminary training. You've been to the seminary more recently than me, but then I just thought about this. Um, you, you also spent an extra year at the seminary. Uh, I did, uh, yes. So you have more book learning. Uh, supposedly. Yeah, so that's really going to come through <laughs> in this uh, Bible study, especially when you just, you don't have your Nestle Allen Greek text. Uh, no. Okay, well, Dr. Belts will be disappointed, but we'll have to deal with that. So, um, I won't expect you to translate from the Greek directly, <laughs> but uh, we're going to start. I'll, I'll read through this first section, uh, starting at verse 14, at 1426. We're reading through an ESV translation. Use whatever translation you want to follow along with. Um, and so it starts with this. And when they Jesus, Jesus and his disciples had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. 
Peter said to them, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to them, and, G and Jesus said to him, to Peter, Truly, I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John, and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again, and again he went away and prayed, saying the same words, and again he came and found them sleeping. For their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to him, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Is it enough? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. So we'll stop there. Usually I have other people read. I didn't give you that courtesy. Um, so, you're, you're, you're doing okay, though? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, uh, so, when they had sung a hymn, and I shared with you on the whiteboard that no one can see over here that I crammed into my office about the Hallel uh, Psalms, which are Psalm 113 to 118. What does Hallel mean? Do you remember in Hebrew? Uh, praise God, something yeah. along praise. those lines. Yeah, it's like hymns of praise. Hallelujah, I think. This is from my <laughs> Yiddish background. Hallelujah, yeah, praise Yahweh. So the, the, the Egyptian Hallel were the psalms that they, they sang in, um, in joy. Um, uh, well, in anticipation of the Passover, Psalm 113 and 114, and then after the Passover, 115 to 118. So it's, it's suggested maybe those are the hymns that they sang. Uh, they went out to the Mount of Olives, uh, then we get these themes here of, um, and we talked about this a little bit last week, so I know some of you have, have this will be review, but there are themes of weakness and failure of the disciples, and then also an overall failure to, um, and control of events uh, by Jesus, the apparent victim. Like, he could, he could do something about this. He's the apparent. Now, I'm reading notes that I took from some, something else. Mm -hmm. He's the apparent victim. Would you say he's only the apparent victim, or is he the victim? Um, <clears throat> probably yes and no. Okay. Uh, I mean, he's willingly letting all these things happen. Um, but there is the, the dark, insidious side to it, like, evil men are after Jesus. Yeah. And we see this, I think especially Luke and John pick up on this, that, you know, the Jews crucified, like, arrested and crucified Jesus. So <clears throat> there is something very evil about that but again not outside God's control but um, there is kind of that tension that yes Jesus willingly laid down his life but uh, evil men did this to Jesus oh, yeah. sounds good I mean he he, uh, he could have called in legions of angels mm -hmm. and he says as much uh, I don't think it's in Mark's gospel or says it but he says it in other places uh, but he does willingly allow himself uh, and give himself up. Mm -hmm. So, so then Jesus, and the, and the reason I want to back up to this because it it touched on what you you just did your devotion on this morning from Psalm twenty three. So, at verse twenty seven, Jesus says, "You'll all fall away." And then the quotation, um, which is it comes from the Old Testament, and and which says, "I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered." And you just talked about Jesus, the good shepherd, this morning. Mm -hmm. Anything come to mind with that as you as you were? Well, usually it seems like shepherd has some sort of connotation of goodness to it. Yeah. Um, you know, Psalm twenty three talks about the Lord is my shepherd, and David attests a lot of good things to the to the shepherd, which ultimately that points to Jesus and uh, striking the shepherd. 
here in verse uh, 27, not a good thing. Right. Um, is, do you think that's, is, is that, can, can we connect that back to, to Genesis 3? That the, the serpent will like strike the heel? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is the, I mean, this is the beginning of his passion, the whole Satan striking the heel. Yeah. This is, this is part of it. Um, Although this is God saying this, so I don't, I mean, yeah. that, God's, I guess you could say he uses Satan, but we can get into some heresy potentially. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so there's those Old Testament overtones there. Jesus is, is the shepherd. If the shepherd is gone, the sheep have no one to care for them. Mm -hmm. And he is the good shepherd who's not going to uh, run away and abandon, but he lays down his life. And he says that in John 10. Mm -hmm. So so then we get, uh, the other reason I want to go into this section, because we get in verse 28, we get a preview of something that we talked about yesterday that I think we can't avoid, we can't but avoid, we can't but avoid, I don't know what I'm saying. We always talk about this, I think, especially you and I. So in 28, Jesus says, is there anything that resonates with you in verse 28? But after I am raised up. What's going on there? He's, he's again talking about his resurrection. Yeah. They may not have any frame of reference here, though. Mm -hmm. Because no one has ever been raised in a in a glorified body yeah. in the way that Jesus will. So I take it the resurrection is important. Uh, it is. It's it's kind of a big deal. I believe in the yeah. resurrection. I believe in the yeah. resurrection. Incidentally, this is sometimes I do this in the Bible class. I noticed on the the YouTube video that we uploaded of the new song service. It <laughs> there was a a copyright claim. It must be automated. It had nothing to do with the music we used. It was a copyright claim on the Apostles' Creed. Really? Yeah, just the spoken Apostles' Creed. I, I didn't know anybody could copyright it. I didn't take the time to, to, <laughs> to work through it. Don't, don't be distracted and check that out right now, but that is something to... Copyright, are you aware of this? Doesn't it belong you didn't, to the church? I thought it did, too. You didn't learn this in your fifth year yeah, of the no, seminary, maybe, maybe about we, copywriting? We that, no. Yeah, okay. So anyway... Um, so it's our creedal confession. This is, this is our theme during Lent. I believe in the resurrection. Uh, but it's, it's not just a Lenten theme. It's a mm -hmm. Christian theme. So after I'm raised up, um, Jesus is going to arrive before the disciples do in Galilee. Um, it leads into Galilee. So we have this, this um, contrast of Jerusalem as a place of rejection and death. For the disciples, it's a place of failure, mm -hmm. like the picture of their failure. And then Galilee uh, is a place of resurrection and restoration. Uh, and then that's where I think the, the, the ministry starts at Acts 1, where the church goes out. Yeah. yeah. So then we get to, uh, so we have the symmetry of scattering and then regathering. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, so, as I think about this, the symmetry of scattering and, rega and regathering. So our God is a God of order, a God of unity. Uh, Sin is something, though, that is disordered in disunity. But Jesus is the one who gathers us together. Mm -hmm. And he gathers us together in specific congregations. Yeah. Like St. John. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, so so the, the temptation, though... I mean, so Satan wants us to be scattered. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one of the, the, the challenges that we're... And God provides, and I think there's there's an opportunity to, to, we've got maybe different people who can't usually be at Bible class or here with us today, uh, especially with this COVID-19 stuff and, and quarantining, it was, this is that's a scattering, mm -hmm. and that's a disconnection, and yet here we are, uh, connected through time and space, through Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Really simple, though. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that before we go on? Okay. So verse 30, Jesus said to him, this is to Peter, Petros, Rocky. Yeah, I love doing that. Adrian. Uh, yeah. Do you want to shout Adrian? No. <laughs> uh, and Jesus says to Peter, truly, you know the Greek word for truly. Say it, brother. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some, some preachers say amen, punctuate amen in a lot amen. of their sermons. Uh, can I get a hey amen? Okay. Hey amen, I tell you. Uh, amen, Lego, soy, if you just want to do review your Greek there. Uh, 
Uh, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you'll deny me three times. Uh, we talked about this last week. I find it interesting. Uh, this is a common biblical theme. It, it, it occurs at least one other place in the Old Testament about man's rebuke by lower creatures. Can you think in the Old Testament where man gets rebuked by a lower creature? Uh, Book of Numbers with uh, Balaam's donkey. Yeah, the, the King James says Balaam's ass. I'm, I'm more pious than I you. I know you so. are. So, but we, I, I don't remember if we got a ruling on that <laughs> on the Wednesday morning, the traditional Wednesday mm-hmm. class. But anyway, it's in the King James. I mean, yeah. yeah. So a donkey <clears throat> rebukes Balaam. God uses, I mean, it, it's, I guess that would be ridiculously humbling mm-hmm. uh, that here you're supposed to be human beings are the pinnacle of creation and have dominion, and now you're being corrected by a donkey or mm-hmm. a rooster. Yep. Yeah. So you will deny me, and, and so it's not just that, that Peter falls away, but he he denies. I mean, he says, not only I'm not sure who you're talking about, he says I don't even know the guy. Mm-hmm. Lord have mercy. Does your a lot of times though people will say, well I wouldn't do that though. I pro- I might. I think I might. Yeah. <clears throat> the fear grip me. People with uh, weapons around you. Yeah, I mean, we we give in to peer pressure in, in much less stressful situations all the time, um, and I, and I think maybe sometimes we give Peter a bad rap, but like he was there. You wanted to try to do something to help Jesus. I mean, right. he was present. The Gospels only tell us that only Peter and John were the only two present right. at the uh, where Jesus was. So. Uh, he was trying to do something. He just failed. Yeah. There was there was a well. We'll see here at the the Gethsemane. We get a the Gethsemane, uh, the garden, <laughs> the, the Google. Yeah. So 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 then Peter says emphatically, um, "If I must die with you, I won't deny you." And then they all chimed in. So it's not like Peter was off by himself. It wasn't a Jerry Maguire moment of who's coming with me and nobody's coming with me. Mm-hmm. You know Jerry Maguire, you're younger yeah. than me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, so they're all coming with him. Mm-hmm. We'll do the same thing. And then we get this sharp contrast of the disciples' good intentions that the, the cream of the crop, the three closest disciples, can't even stand, wa- let, sit, watch, whatever mm-hmm. with them. Uh, Lois adds a uh, remark that uh, the NIV instead of deny says disown. You will disown me. Yeah. That's a little harsher, I think. Yeah. So Peter is going to disown Jesus. Disown him as... Hmm. As his shepherd. Oh, yeah, okay. Which, yeah, that would be... That's very biblical. Because if, if, if we... The first commandment, shall have no other gods... Mm-hmm. When we break the first commandment, which we, in breaking any other, you break the first, we're essentially disowning, disowning God. God. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Lois. Helps. Uh, I mean, not thank you doesn't feel good, but it, was, <laughs> it helps to add some yep. nuance to that. So, so we get to um, the next section at 32, which looks like a new paragraph. And I think, yeah, in the ESV, it says Jesus prays in Gethsemane. So they go to this place called Gethsemane. It's a place where there is uh, an olive press. From what I understand, from Paul Meyer, and Jesus took with him the three mm-hmm. closest one, so they are the the greatest among equals, or something like that. Is that what they're called? Something like that. Am the, I just making the, this up? The, the inner three. Inner, inner mm-hmm. three. Okay. Uh, Peter, James, and John. And Peter, James, and John. Jesus has has taken Peter, James, and John into some really intense, awesome situations before. Uh, they were there and had a front row seat at the raising of Jairus' daughter in 537. Mm-hmm. They were there uh, in Mark 9 at the Mount of Transfiguration. So they've seen, and then we, we, I preached on, I don't always remember what all my sermons are about. They're about Jesus. But I do remember recently, because it's Second Peter 1, I think it's Second Peter 1, where Peter is looking back and saying how important the Transfiguration was. And I think it's because he gets a glimpse of the future Jesus in his glorified body, but it's not as awesome as it is now because it has not been mm-hmm. pierced by the nail and the spear. 
And so he takes them with him, and he began to be greatly uh, distressed. I don't remember. Um, I don't have any special notes on the Greek word there. Do you, do you have to know it off the uh, top of your head? No. That's really distressing. But I just, uh, it's distressing. Yeah, it is distressing to me that you don't know it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> oh, but I think it's, it's fascinating that Jesus, the Son of God, he himself is distressed and troubled. Oh. What does that say about Jesus? Uh, that he's very human. Yeah. Um, he knows what he's about to go through, and he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to do it, in a sense. He's not some kind of uh, robot who suppresses his emotions or mm -hmm. turns off his uh, emotion chip, mm -hmm. like Star Trek: The Next Generation with Data. Yeah. He's you ever watch Star Trek: The Next Generation? Oh yeah. Yeah. You like sci-fi stuff. I, I do. Yeah. yeah. But he's he's not an android. No. He's so he yeah that. And you preached on the temptation of our Lord mm -hmm. for the first Sunday in Lent. Mm -hmm. That's back when we used to be able to go to church. Yeah. Yeah. Way we'll back. go to church again. Way back. Someday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, because I, I think this, th th there's a parallel here as, as uh, this, this comes up about the temptation. So, uh, and Jesus says to them, the historic present, I think is what that is, because it's literally he says to them. Mm -hmm. That's how you tell the story. Is that how you tell stories when you're from Nebraska, too? And he says, I don't, I don't think I do. I've never picked up on any quirks that you yeah, do. Some people just say, and they were like, and I was like. I'm glad it doesn't say, <laughs> Jesus was like, yeah. uh, my soul is very, no, okay, I yeah. got distracted. Jesus says to them, my soul is very sorrowful. Uh, uh, it looks like it's uh, perilupas. I have perilupas down there, and that seems like that's the right word. Um, yeah, perilupas estin, uh, Hey, suke. Soul. I know suke. Soul. Suke <laughs> is, is soul. Yeah. yeah. Estin is hey, my. Yeah. Oh, mu is me, my. Okay. Um, so even to death, remain here and watch. Um, so there is a. Uh, Psalm 42 5 and 11 this is, is basically repeated. And it, and, it, and it says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation. But the Psalms are really timely for like every day. Yeah. So Jesus is asking this, or praying. So it's Dietrich Bonhoeffer who says, uh, Christ praised the Psalms, David praised the Psalms, we mm -hmm. pray the Psalms. Is that the order? I think it's the order. It's yeah, it sounds, it sounds book. Good. Somewhere on my shelf here. <laughs> Not organized with the Library of Congress. No. Is that how you have yours? Uh, yes. Yeah. Most of Just organized by the countrymen. <laughs> put it on the shelf method by height. No, so, uh, but Bonhoeffer says that. So, why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you in turmoil within me? But that's like a pretty good way to talk about having any kind of anxiety. Mm -hmm. But then... David does this in the Psalms. The Psalms often do this. So here's this, I am hurting and I'm going to tell God everything. And then, and then this 180, hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation. Mm -hmm. So this mood of despair eventually is going to give way to a calm trust in his father. Yeah. Yeah. And we see that in the next few verses. Yeah. He's the perfectly obedient son where Israel has not been obedient. Mm -hmm. So going a little farther, uh, he fell on the ground and he prayed that if it were possible, the hour <clears throat> might pass from him. So this, uh, the posture is important here. Not just he folded his hands and bowed his head, uh, but he falls on the ground. This kind of shows the depth of emotion mm -hmm. here and uh, sorrow. Anything else that comes to mind there? It's just kind of, it seems like he's already pretty broken at this time. Yeah. Even though his body's not broken yet, he's all, he's emotionally, spiritually broken at this point. So this, so that's it. So what you're saying, I think we're seeing with Jesus, and we know this, but the things that impact us emotionally and spiritually, are you saying they impact us physically? Yeah, they certainly do. And, like our, and vice versa. Like, the things that impact, impact us physically, if we have physical pain, can make us despair and mm -hmm. sorrowful? Yeah. Yeah. So you're, it sounds like our bodies, like every aspect of our bodies are meant to be together and when they're yeah, off. We're holistic beings. Yeah, body and soul. Yeah. Yeah. 
the resurrection of the body. It's important. Yeah. So, Jesus prays that if it's possible, uh, the hour in Matthew's Gospel, it says, you know what it says in Matthew's Gospel rather than the hour? Uh, the cup. The cup, yeah. You pass the test. That's that extra year of seminary. Yeah, yes, I, guess it, I got it. Uh, 1436, so, and he said, and I think this is where you're talking about this, this now, the, the intimacy and the trusting in his father, and he said, Abba. Your favorite musical group? Uh, Swedish? Uh, yeah. Yeah. My mom's favorites. Oh, yeah? Not mine, no, but... Your mom's a dancing queen. She, she is, yeah. yeah. I like to... Yesterday it was Rolling Stones, Get Off My Cloud. Oh, yeah. And you said I could have it. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, can, keep you can keep it. You can have it, too. A is it ABBA <laughs> is how you pronounce it? ABBA. Here's, ABBA. At least, I don't know. It's probably not the most important point here. But so ABBA... It, but the, it, it, so not only does it say ABBA, it, there's another word there. there that, that's the, that's a, the Hebrew word. It's a Hebrew word for father? Is it Aramaic? Or Aramaic. I don't My Hebrew book was Aramaic. had Aramaic in it also. Yeah, I think it's Aramaic. But I had to have it rebound. It's right here. Biblical. Oh, yeah. Fundamental biblical Hebrew. But it also has an Aramaic section in it. Yeah. I didn't get that far. Um, but I, I had to have it rebound. Oh. Not because I was such a great student, but because it fell apart. So... There you go. I don't know why. I just wanted to impress you <laughs> yeah. with that. So, er, Abba, Aramaic or Hebrew? I mean, Aramaic and Hebrew are related, yeah. though, right? Okay. So, Abba, but then also, when it says Father, that's Pater, mm -hmm. which is Greek. Yeah. Which also the Latin word for Father is similar, because Greek and Latin are similar mm -hmm. in that sense. Uh, you got a question? Uh, Rick, thank you for confirming it is Aramaic. Also. Yeah, Larry Down has got fall on the ground and humbly prayed mm -hmm. in humility. Yeah. Humility is a virtue. Yeah. It's a manly thing to mm -hmm. be humble. Yeah, That's why too. my wife doesn't think I'm very manly when I <laughs> to, yeah, when I brag about things. Yeah. So Jesus understand. falls before his father in, in humility. That's a good point. Because he does submit to yeah. the will of his father. Because yeah. he says, not my will. Mm -hmm. we're, we're coming up next. Yeah, that's a good catch there. And then Rick Reed points out it's Aramaic for daddy. Rick Reed is trivia champion. There you go. St. John, yeah. trivia. Maybe even southern Indiana. I, one of the, I've heard rumors. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he says, all things are possible for you. Um, and and uh, panta dunata, because I think that has to do with dunamis, works of power. All works... Uh, to you, I, I'm or pan, uh, par. I have no idea what that word is. So, um, at any rate, all things you can do all things, mm -hmm. and because God is all powerful, nothing's outside of His yeah. he's omnipotent, and He's good. Yeah, both true at the same time. So, so then Jesus submits to the Father's will. So, remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Mm -hmm. Not what I fellow what I des desire but what you mm -hmm. desire um, the, the one of these authors R.T. France in, in his commentary he says prayer and I think this would be a, this, is, this happens in the Lord's Prayer prayer consists not in changing God's mind but finding our own alignment with God's will where our desire um, is not in line with God's purpose then we Okay, God, your will, mm -hmm. not mine. Pray this in the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So prayer is something... Well, and so this is where I wanted to get the whiteboard that's over there, but um, in our Lutheran theology, we, so it starts from God to us. Mm -hmm. So prayer also. So God, the words that we speak, the reality that we know is all something that God has created and holds together. So in the same way, our prayers are really shaped by what God has already said to us. Mm -hmm. And then, ideally, we say back to him. Hence, uh, Jesus, David, us, praying the Psalms. Right. Um, these are words from God, that originate from God, but we get to pray them back to God. Yes. And they change us. Okay. Our prayers don't really change God, because he doesn't change. Although we still pray, I mean, we can pray... So there, so so Luther makes a distinction. I think of something. So, like, um, 
there are some petitions that we can pray that we don't have to say, if it be your will. Like if we pray for the salvation of all the earth or something, yeah. all mankind. Or, it is God's will that all be saved. Yeah. Or to pray for forgiveness. Yeah. If it be your will, forgive me. Or, it's like we already know it's his will. <laughs> yeah. Cause, but there are some things like we, we could pray, Father, if it be your will, that this uh, quarantine would end Today. by 8 o'clock tonight. Yeah. But we wouldn't just say make it. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, we're submitting. Yeah, there's probably more to, to get into with that, but it just came to mind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so Jesus came and found them sleeping, and he says to Peter, this is verse 37, uh, he says to Peter, but then he calls him Simon, uh, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? So this is especially... In ironic or, or a, a sharp contrast because in light of what Jesus has already said in the farewell discourse in Mark 13 so in Mark 13 35 and 36 Jesus is very explicit and he says no one knows the day or the hour and he says therefore 1335 stay awake uh, for you do not know when the master of the house will come you a Les Miserables fan? Uh, Master of yeah. the house, yeah. two keeper of the... No, okay, that's that came up last time, and then you get the earworm. So we'll have to come up with a different one. Okay. So you don't know when the master of the house is coming. Will it come in the in the in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning? And then he says it again, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. <laughs> and what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. And now, it's only 38 verses later, or something, you can't even stay awake. <laughs> You'd be better than that. Though. You were in the army. Did you ever have to be on watch? Yeah, I duty? never fell asleep at a night. I never fell asleep while I was on duty. You're, you're <laughs> a strong man. <laughs> uh, no, I, I definitely sympathize with the, uh, with the disciples. It's, if you've ever pulled a night shift, it's hard to stay awake. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we see already we're getting a hint as, as confident as Peter is and all the rest of them, we can't, they can't even do this basic thing. Yeah. <clears throat> but I don't know that I would be able to do it too. Lois has a note here. Uh, our human nature makes that one of our pray because we ultimately want our way. Absolutely. We want, we want to be God instead of letting God be God. And, um, we want to sleep instead of staying awake. Uh, yeah. I would make a terrible God, I think. I think most of us would. Yeah, my life would be terrible. But, but I'm still tempted to want to be in control of things. I'd like to control this camera so it would turn that way so I wouldn't have to sit so close to you. Yeah. Not because I don't like you, but I am a little bit socially... Social distance. I don't think we'd sit this close together even without a quarantine. Yeah. We'll figure it out. We're going to work on a different camera after this. So, uh, let's see how much time we, we still have a little bit of time here. Um, oh, I have a... <laughs> I, I just noticed... Thanks, Paul. 15 minutes later, Paul did send me... Paul Johnson sent me a text. Arlene says you should always say donkey. So, if Arlene was giving points, uh -huh. you get more points than me. Because I push the envelope sometimes. <laughs> I'm not trying to be crude. I mm -hmm. just... You this King James only. Oh, there are yeah. some King James only Lutherans. Yep. And I'm not Lutherans. King James only. King James only people. Bible Christians. Baptist believing yeah. people. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Paul, thanks for that. Thanks for that uh, text. Okay. <laughs> Let's stay stay focused. You okay. distract me from that. Okay. So, uh, thirty eight. Another echo. Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. And Jesus has already been tempted. So that's what I was thinking about this when I was rereading it this morning, and you had preached on the temptation. And, and that's the first Sunday in Lent. So he, like, he walks the way mm -hmm. for us. And we're seeing the frailty of the three toughest disciples. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, really just interesting, the timing. And these are, this is the Lenten-themed text that we're reading anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Spirit 
indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, I had a note from, I think it was R.T. France. He's, he's Roman Catholic, so that's, if we don't like this, just because he's Catholic, we can say that. But uh, he says these words apply to Jesus as well as the disciples. I think so. I think it's consistent, though, because yeah. he's true man. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we already see Jesus is struggling. I mean, he's, he's distressed and troubled. My soul is very sorrowful, even unto death. He asks his father, his Abba, take this cup from me. Um, so Jesus is struggling. I think, I think Jesus himself is being tempted here. To oh, just, yeah. He just yeah. walk away from it. Like, he has the power. He doesn't, to, to go a different direction. Um, yeah. So I think he himself is being tempted in this very moment. And he's asking his disciples to join with him in resisting and fighting temptation. But they can't even stay awake, let alone fight temptation at this point. So, so there's... <laughs> There's, there's ultimately an urge to run away and put your own safety first. So, so this would be in, when it's talked about negatively with the bad shepherd who, in order to preserve his own life, runs away when the wolf is coming. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the one who doesn't run away. Mm -hmm. But the temptation for us is to put our own safety and, uh, and loyalty uh, at the forefront before loyalty to God and then his son, mm -hmm. which then we see puts yep. his own safety first. Mm -hmm. It's tough to live by faith. Uh, yeah. 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 But Jesus does it perfectly. Yeah. It's not comfortable to live by faith. Somebody preached on that recently. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. It's a place to be comforted, yeah. but not necessarily comfortable. Yeah, because this, I'm not comfortable with how closely I'm yeah, sitting. Yeah to you, but that's still not, that's comforted that knowing that this is for other people. But comforted so. doing, yeah, for, for other people. So, uh, 39, and again, Jesus went away and prayed, saying the same words. So he's, it, it's not a mantra, but I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a laser focus to what Jesus is, is talking to his Abba, his father about. Uh, and again, Jesus came, verse 40, and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. I guess they're just dead to right. I don't know. What, uh, and so then Jesus comes a third time and said to them, or he says to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? What does that mean to take your rest? To sleep? I guess so. You lay down. Like you, you just store, I don't know. Yeah. So, but he says, it's enough. The hour has come. Uh, the Son of Man is betrayed. He's handed over into the hands of sinners. Now, there was one thing that I've noted here. The, the Greek has idu there before handed over. And I don't know if it's a huge thing, but idu, you remember what it means? Um, no. It means behold. Oh, okay. Or in the Gibbs translation, it means looky here. Looky here. Uh, pay attention. Pay attention. Notice. Behold. It's happening. Hark. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to... How did he say it in 2020? Hey. Hey. I thought something like, blippity blip, or something. I don't know. So, uh, so anyway, behold, so he's, he's handed over, he's betrayed into the hands of sinners. So this is a fulfillment uh, of the announcement of betrayal and death that he made at the Passover meal. Mm -hmm. This is what's going to happen. And, and again and again in the scriptures, it, it comes up, in the Gospels, it'll say, it'll happen just as he said. Yo is what uh, Mr. Gallagher. Mr. Gallagher is very hip mm -hmm. uh, with that. So. Oh, yo, that's the yo. You do. Yo, behold, yo, yo, yo. All right, we'll use that. Yo, 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 Pastor Luke. Let's keep going. <laughs> so, uh, forty-two, rise, let us be going. See. Yo, <laughs> there you go, because it says you do there. Yo. Thanks, Mr. Gallagher. Yo! Uh, my betrayer's, my betrayer's in hand. So, Carol Lee says streaming stop for it, but we've got yo saying that, so I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like it's still going. So, uh, yo, my betrayer is, is let's, let's go, my betrayer is at hand, and then we, we have verse 43. We've still got time. Let's go. We are, we are cooking with gas here. Yep. Uh, so, will you read 43 to 52 for sure. us? 
<clears throat> and immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as, as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in, in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. All right. So uh, immediately, this in the first half of Mark's gospel, the, the word immediately, which is the Greek word uthus, or oithus, Keep, keep going. I'm gonna... Okay, Uthus or Oithus is there, uh, so that that comes up. Uh, Tom Lee is in charge of saying that word every time we, it comes up. Uh, immediately while he was still speaking, Judas uh, came, one of the twelve, uh, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. So this is. Um, It, now, the, the, basically from the moment of Jesus' arrival in Gethsemane, the disciples begin to fade out of the picture. So you've got Jesus with the Twelve at the Last Supper, and then we've got Jesus taking only Peter and James and John uh, to, the, to Gethsemane, and then slowly they're, they're all going to go away, and it's going to be Christ alone. Uh, and they... Before long, they're, they're, well, they're physically separated from Jesus. They're not even in the story here when we get right to the crucifixion. So, so Judas comes up, and um, as opposed to the other three Gospels, Mark, the other three, um, yeah, the other three Gospels, so that would be the other two synoptics, mm -hmm. uh, as well as John. Mark doesn't mention as much about Judas. We don't have as much about the background. Mm -hmm. So um, Judas comes, and, and he comes with, uh, at this point, it's not the Romans who are coming to arrest him, right? It's the, it's like the, the Jews. Temple guard or something. Yeah, it's a Jewish posse. Yeah, uh, that comes. It's a, it's an officially, um, it's a, an officially sanctioned arresting party. Mm -hmm. A posse. Yeah. I don't. You can ride with my posse. Yeah. Or something. So. Um, and then we get, so, and then it tells us from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders who are kind of this, uh, unholy triumvirate or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're unholy. Well, they may be unholy. But, uh, now the betrayer, that's, that's, uh, Judas, mm -hmm. uh, the one who would hand him over, uh, gave, had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss, uh, is the man, seize him and lead him away under guard. So we get some of the background and then 45 here's here's what actually happened when he came he went up at once and said what do you call him rabbi rabbi which means teacher teacher uh and then the greek word here is actually different and i, I looked this up before it's 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 a different word for kiss because the the one is phileso which is like a showing love i think and this word is uh Cut a file, cut a so so it still has it's the same semantic domain. Mm -hmm. There was a question though: it, it, was it a longer embrace? No. Maybe just to really demonstrate. I don't know. I wasn't. Were you there? I, I wasn't there. Were you there when they, when they kiss, kiss? Yeah, kiss hand Jesus him over my Lord. Yeah. Me. So, and they laid hands on him. Isn't there a saying, a colloquialism? Do you want to throw hands? Ever heard of the saying? Throw hands. I think it has to do with fighting. It was back in the days when I was a street fighter. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Gallagher would know. Before, before yeah. you went to <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, so, verse 47. But one of those who stood by... Now, do you know this guy's name? Do you have any suspicion uh, of who this guy's name? I have a sneaking suspicion that it's uh, Simon Peter. 
Okay, yeah, because in John's gospel, he says Peter did this. <clears throat> but Mark... Now, there is... Uh, Mark Yonke pointed out a couple weeks ago, and I think this is, this is worth saying, um, that... Uh, because Mark's gospel... Well, there is a question, I mean, in terms of which is the earliest. Mm -hmm. But regardless, Mark's gospel is earlier than John's gospel. Yeah. See, John's gospel mentions Peter did this. John's gospel also mentions, I think it's John 13, um, that after Lazarus is raised from the dead, mm -hmm. that Mary and Martha are there, and that Mary is the one who washes Je or anoints Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mark's gospel doesn't mention anybody's names. Now, Mark Yonke's theory that he read from something else, and I think it holds water. Did I tell you this already? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I'll just make sure that, I'm, uh, that because this is earlier, they want to protect the identity of people. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So yeah. There's another place where that could come up. Possibly. So, John, enough time has passed. Now we can start mentioning people's names. Yeah. So, uh, okay. John mentions Peter did this. Bible trivia for 500 points uh, for a Purdue... For a Purdue Sun Visor <laughs> from the Outback Bowl in 2000, slightly dusty. We lost at the time the worst ever. Uh, we were up 25 to nothing and lost 20, 26 to 25. Oh, so, gosh. but the, you could wear this. What's the name of the servant whose ear was cut off? Uh, Malchus. There you go, buddy. Uh, no, I can't uh, let you touch that. That's uh, coronavirus. coronavirus. Uh -huh. Okay. So, anyway, good job, Malchus. Malchus. Uh, <clears throat> so, he stood by, and, and he drew his sword, he struck the servant, Malchus of the high priest here. That's in John's Gospel. Um, it does say, now, it, it, one note in the Greek, it, it, the ESV translates it literally, one of those who stood by doesn't necessarily mean disciple. Now, that would be contrary to John's Gospel. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. A, a person standing by could be anybody. Yeah. Uh, stay koton. That's something to do with standing, from what I remember. You went five years yeah. in the seminary. Not because you were remedial, you did extra stuff. Uh, systematics, not, not, yeah. not exegetical. You need to be to do that, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. So, uh, 48, and Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber, a lace tie, uh, with swords and clubs to capture me? Now, this is ironic, because in the end, Jesus is ultimately, cruci ultimately crucified between two robbers. Yeah. Right, so he points that out. Uh, and he says, look, I was with you day after day in the temple teaching. You didn't seize me, but let the scriptures be fulfilled. Thoughts on that? Uh, it's just interesting. The other gospels, um, Jesus addresses, you know, he tells his disciples, hey, stop, stop fighting. Right. Uh, Mark's gospel doesn't. He just immediately addresses uh, the posse that's after him. Like, oh, yeah. Well, what? Why are you yeah. coming after me with, with swords and clubs? Right. Um, so he doesn't, in, in Mark's gospel, Jesus doesn't really address the cutting off the ear incident. Uh, yeah. He just goes directly to addressing the um, the group that's there that's, a, that's seizing him. So Yeah. And then ultimately, but nevertheless, the scripture is going to be fulfilled. Yeah. What was prophesied, prophesied mm -hmm. is happening. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a continuity here from the very beginning. So verse 50, and I, I see Lois has a question, uh, and we'll get to this about the significance of the young man naked. Um, so, so they all left him and fled. And so Jesus' response, though, that you were just talking about in, in 48 and 49, it, it shows that that he's not going to resist arrest. Mm -hmm. Let the scriptures be fulfilled. That, that like a lamb being led to slaughter, mm -hmm. is Isaiah, I think. Yeah. Uh, the suffering servant. That, that he is, he's prepared to go to death. Yeah. But he's also kind of pointing out the ridiculousness of the whole situation. Like, I was with you in the temple right. all this time. Why don't you just do it then? Yeah. He's kind of pointing like, what have I actually done? <laughs> right. I haven't done anything. Right. But again, he's submitting to his father as well. Yeah. By submitting to evil men. Yeah. So. Um, so, so verse 50, very short, they all left him and fled. Now one 
author says that, that you can just take this as a factual statement rather than one of blame. What else could they have done? Yeah. I mean, because he, he already said, put your sword away. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I mean, they could have gone right to Twitter. Yeah. And started a Twitter war. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't have, you know, they couldn't. They didn't have yeah. Twitter then. Well, and all these people have swords and they have weapons again. And like, right. Disciples, they're not soldiers. They're. What are they going to do in this situation? So the weapons that we have, so we think about then going forward to Ephesians 6, the whole armor of Christ is mm -hmm. defensive. Really, the only offensive thing you have is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So I, this is consistent. Yeah. Jesus is pretty consistent yeah. with the scriptures. It's amazing. It is amazing. It shouldn't be surprising. Yeah. So uh, Lois Holmbaum's question here. Uh, verse 51, And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him. This is like my fear that I was just talking about, <laughs> yeah, about yeah, having yeah. a towel fall off. Who is this young man? Uh, a lot of people think it's uh, Mark. John Mark. John Mark. his name, yeah. The author of this gospel. That he's written himself in. Mm -hmm. I mean, in a factual way. Yeah. Uh, it also, it probably adds to the sense of abandonment so so not only are the 12 abandoning him one of which actually betrays him um but even this in this case anonymous sympathizer even he runs away mm -hmm. uh and gets his he's running away in his with his cloth mm -hmm. there is some speculation it could be john mark one other person said it could be the garrison demoniac who's come back, who's following, mm -hmm. uh, could be Jairus' daughter, but I don't know how that would be because it says a young man. Yeah, that's weird. Um, Neon, yeah, well, I, those notes were from eight years ago. Mm -hmm. I might have been tired. <laughs> so. It's because once I read it, it didn't make sense. But that's what I have written there. I'd have yeah. to look in yeah. this book and see. It's probably yeah. in there. So, uh, he, well, then this is, so he, had, he, all he had was the linen cloth and he ran away Naked. Yeah. There's yeah. no time for covering up mm -hmm. when you're scared. Yeah, and a young man. I mean, how? What, what's young? Like 15, 16, 20? I don't know. Oh. You're a young man. To some, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Younger than me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he, it, it, I think shows the complete failure and abandonment that, uh, they did not support Jesus when the moment came. And, and when it was less high stakes, I mean, even just Peter, Peter, James, and John can't stay awake and pray with him. Mm -hmm. And now under this, although Peter did cut the guy's ear off. Yeah. If it was Peter, we think it was. Yeah. Um, but to your point, Lois, it is, a, it is kind of a strange note. Like, why is this? Because only Mark's gospel records this. So why is this, why is this in here, this, this note about this young person? Unnamed young man, right, and then running away naked. It, 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 it's it's weird, but it's also so each of the gospels has their own flavor, their own yeah. perspective, mm -hmm. which adds to the <clears throat> a, a fuller picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mark's gospel is the gospel of action, shortest gospel. That's why uh, we've only taken so far. We started going through this wherever that. No, I don't know. A long time ago. We're like six months into this on Wednesday morning. So we've covered more today than ever. But I think this is probably a good stopping point. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else you want to add before we sign off? Uh, I found it interesting, um, just kind of jumping back a little bit. In verse 36, Jesus uses an Aramaic word, Abba. But then again, Judas, in verse 45, uses another Aramaic word, uh, Rabbi. Yeah. Uh, so just this kind of interesting uh, uh, use of Aramaic words here. I don't know if there's any anything special about it, but um. well, I think there's an intimacy. It maybe shows a greater intimacy, but then I think shows also the depth of betrayal. Yeah, so that he he still uses a term that would be mm -hmm. more known to the closest to those mm -hmm. closest to him. Yeah. So. Yeah, I just thought it interesting, the close proximity of two Aramaic yeah. terms. So, 
Yeah. We have a question here uh, or an observation. I, I can see it on my phone, but I can't see it here. It says, uh, Rick Reed, uh, Shirley says that Mark includes the detail to reveal his own fear. Oh. So maybe uh, he's, he himself feels guilt and shame for abandoning his Lord and wants to include that. There's an authenticity with that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think, I don't know, I would guess you relate to this. I would, I, what strikes me is, so in preaching, oftentimes, I mean, at least, hopefully I don't, I'm, I'm in, more inclined probably to share my own inadequacies and insufficiencies because I also struggle to, what does yeah. this mean to follow Jesus? That that, maybe it's even more endearing. Well, in the previous verse, verse 50, and they all fled, left him and fled, Oh, and I was one of them too. I fled right, too. Right. Yeah. The the Mark's gospel, I think, is is and Dr. Belt says this is pretty sophisticated. Yeah. It, it's uh, despite being the shortest, and what I found, at least, uh, formerly I, I was able to preach shorter sermons, but that is continue to get longer. The less prepared I am, the longer <laughs> mm-hmm. the sermon. So this is maybe so crystallized, so sophisticated, it's even shorter. Mm-hmm. Very concise. Yeah. I'm not saying every short sermon is always better than a longer <laughs> sermon. I just, but I yeah. think there's definitely something to that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you got any other, any other thoughts here? We, I'll, I'd like you to close sure. uh, in prayer today. Uh, well, let us pray. Uh, dear Father God, uh, we thank you for uh, allowing us to uh, gather together uh, virtually uh, to, to dive into your word in the book of Mark. Um, Although uh, we'd much rather meet in person, uh, we're thankful for the gifts to be able to, to uh, still meet and uh, to hear from your word. Uh, we ask that you be with all of us this day. Uh, be with uh, this whole uh, coronavirus situation. We ask that you would give us uh, strength and courage uh, to, to not give in to fear and anxiety, but also uh, wisdom and discernment to, to uh, act uh, to in obedience, but also uh, to uh, serve our neighbors, especially those that are most vulnerable and um, uh, vo- most vulnerable to uh, to this sickness. We ask that you would help us to to look to Jesus. Uh, that even though we uh, flee from Jesus all the time, that He continues to uh, uh, reach out to us, and that He continues to be with us. Help us to look to Him and to trust in Him. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We'll see you later.